Hello. Hi, chat. How you doing? What's up, Casey? Nice of you to join. Hey, Squeeby. How's it going? What's up, Bigfoot? Glad you're here. What's up, Hope? How's it going? Oh, you're getting over a cold? I hope. I hope you uh, feel better soon. What's up, Bigfoot? You're leaving for Europe? Oh, hell yeah. Where are you going? What's up, Peepzilla? How's it going? London and Paris and possibly Brussels. Awesome. What's up, Speedy Dragon? What the? All right. We can do the Africa quiz. And then um, we can do something else after that, okay? What's up, Nitesh? How am I? I am doing okay. Where do I get my pandan leaf tea? Uh, online. <laughs> uh, I originally, initially I got it from um, this one restaurant. This one vegan restaurant. Or vegetarian. One of those. Yeah, but they, can, they sell it on Amazon. Or online, wherever. Yeah, just buy pandan leaf tea. Just look it up. Every live stream starts with me sipping tea. <laughs> How am I feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah, last time I wasn't feeling so good because I had the, the COVID shot um, yeah, the day before. But now I'm good. All right, we can do Africa quiz and then something else afterwards, okay? Boop, boop, boop. Not panda leaf tea. Okay. Oh, God. What did we get last time? Was it 85? All right, we're going to get 86% today. 86. Am I vegan? No, I'm not. Definitely not. Are you kidding me? I can't. Uh, Comoros. Is it here? Benin should be this one. South Africa. Togo is this. Guinea Bissau. Must be this. Fuck! Oh, I knew that too. Oh no, I messed it up. Oh no. Oh no, I don't think we can, I don't think we can reach 80, 86%, guys. Not today. Gambia, Burundi. Here, right? No, that's Lesotho. Burundi should be here. Oh, damn. Angola should be here. Djibouti, Eswatini. Oh no. Wait, where is Eswatini? Wait, where is that? Oh, fuck. Gabon. Here. Somalia. Morocco, Madagascar. Uh, I don't think we can do it. I don't think we can do it. Zimbabwe. This must be Mozambique. Zimbabwe is here. Okay. Mauritania. Uganda. Oh, that's Rwanda. Uganda should be here. 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 Uganda. Rwanda. Oh, Rwanda, then Uganda. Okay. All right, we can remember that. Guinea. Malawi should be here. Republic of the Congo. Fuck! Ethiopia. Botswana. South. Liberia. Eritrea. Mm, Chad. Ghana. No. Ivory Coast. Oh no. Mozambique. Mali. Zambia. 
Where is Zambia? Sotho. Niger. Namibia. Cape Verde. This one. Mauritius. Kenya should be here, right? Oh, damn. The better. Ah, fuck. Okay, Republic. Cameroon. Sierra Leone. Tunisia should be here. Tanzania? Libya? Ah! That's Egypt, why? Okay. No! Several of those were misclicks, okay? They were misclicks. If I didn't misclick, that would have been 86%. S1 Martini. <laughs> okay, stop panicking. Uh. I knew where Egypt was! Alright, one more time, one more time. Just one more time. Alright, let's do this. 86, let's do this. Malawi. Ghana. Cameroon. Zimbabwe, this Mozambique, so Zimbabwe should be here, 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 Nigeria, Soto should be here, Morocco, Eritrea, we can do this, Algeria, Guinea-Bissau, Burkina Faso, Egypt, Seychelles, Tunisia, Senegal should be this one. Rwanda. Togo. Okay. Not bad. Okay. Mozambique. Not bad. Namibia. Oh. oh. Angola. Eswatini. Where is that? I never get that. Where's Eswatini? Is it here? Oh, okay. Madagascar, Mauritius, Sierra Leone. Nope. That's Ivory Coast. Sierra Leone should be here. Oh, almost, almost. You see that? South Africa, Djibouti, Sudan. Oh, I can feel it. We can do it. We can do it. I can feel it. Tanzania, it's one of these. Here. Ah! Oh! Democratic. Mauritania. Botswana. Benin. Burundi. Oh, I don't know where Burundi is. Burundi. Oh, oh yeah. Guinea. All right, Libya. Uganda. Uganda next to Rwanda. Okay. Zambia is here. Mali. Equatorial Guinea. Kenya. Kenya. Kenya is here. Liberia. South Sudan, Comoros, Comoros here, right? The Gambia, Central African Republic, Ivory Coast, Western Sahara, Chad, Gabon, Niger, Cape Verde. Oh my God! Oh my God! 90%! Whoa! Alright, which one did we miss? One, two, three countries! Okay. Three countries. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Hell yeah! Okay. That was kind of cheating, because I already did it. I did it twice. But it's okay.
Um, <laughs> I should do it twice each week. I've almost completed the planet. True. Chad looks like a dude's profile. Oh, hey, you're right. That's his hair. Oh, that's a good way to remember it. That's his hair, and that's like a nose. That's like a mouth. True. All right. Do you guys know about chat? GPT. Wait, 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 hold on. One second. I need to log in. One second. Give me one second. Dude, go to chat, chat GPT. Okay. Guys, you can talk to this AI and it'll do anything for you. You can ask it questions. You can uh, tell it to make, like, uh, do some creative writing. You can do that. There's a lot of things you can do. Like, tell me a samurai joke. Oh. Okay, well, I guess I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not programmed to tell jokes. Um, you can, anything. Oh. Uh, what did you eat for lunch? As a large language model, I do not have the ability to eat or consume food. Okay, fine. You know what? Maybe not. Hold on. Um, how does a vacuum work? Cleaner work. You gotta know that. Okay. So it tells you that, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not a conversation. Here's the thing. Explain how a vacuum cleaner works, but do it in a strong southern accent. What the f- Okay, hold on. This is not going as I planned. Hold on. Let me do something else. There's another website. <laughs> we obviously are not at the right website. Okay, okay. This one. This one can do that. Okay, let's do it again. Tell me a samurai, a dirty samurai joke. All right. What did the samurai say when he stepped in poop? Ooh, that's gone a samurai. I don't know what that means. It is dirty though. It it's uh it referenced poop. Okay. You know what? It's not that funny. Let's try it again. <clears throat> All right. Why did the samurai go to the brothel? For a sword fight. Okay. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Not that funny. Alright, here, okay, let's try the, our thing again. 
uh, explain how a TARDIS works, <clears throat> but in a southern, a, a heavy southern accent. Ask it what it thinks of the internet. Okay. Now, I've been playing around with this. The strong thing, the, the really good thing that thing, this thing does is um, it can make poems that rhyme. It's really good at that. Okay. I don't know why it's so slow. Because when I was using it, it's hella fast. Do, 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 do. Why do you take off your pants? Okay, we're gonna ask that next. Do the poems make sense? The poems make a lot of sense. It's so good. Oh, you know why? It's being used so much. That's why. I was using it yesterday and it was so fast. Fuck. All right. Hold on. No. All right. You know what? We can do. We can do both websites. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. How does a TARDIS work? How is a TARDIS bigger on the inside than the outside? <clears throat> its interior is much larger than its exterior because it is able to access different dimensions and has the ability to manipulate time and space. This allows it to be, okay? There you go. There you go. Oh, Southern accent. <laughs> well, a TARDIS is a pretty amazing contraption. It's a time machine that looks like a big old blue telephone box from the outside, but on the inside it's a whole lot bigger. It's got this technology that allows it to travel through time and space and is powered by the Eye of Harmony, which is this powerful energy source. It's got a control console inside that you can use to pilot the TARDIS and choose where you want to go. It's pretty wild and something you gotta see to believe. There you go. But, so I've been, tr let's see. Explain. All right. Write me a review of Game of Thrones season eight, but as a rapper who lost his who is trying to find his goddamn keys. Okay. Come on. This should be good. But it's so slow. <laughs> He goes, hey, yo, what's cracking, y'all? This is your boy, rapper name. Okay, that's kind of weird. I'm here to drop some hot fire on Game of Thrones Season 8. Let me tell you, this season had me searching high and low for my damn keys. There was so much drama and tension, I couldn't keep up. From Arya's journey to the Iron Throne to brands of broken surprise. Blah, 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 blah. The battles were pulsating and the characters were captivating. Whether it was the armies of the dead or the dragons scorched in the skies, the show pulled out all the stops. And the finale, oh man, where do I even begin? Okay, this is not true. This is a terrible reviewer. Now if you excuse me, I gotta go find those keys. Now I want, write me a scathing review. Okay, this is much better. But as a what? But as a...
samurai who just betrayed his lord and is deathly afraid of being killed. Let's try it one last time. Come on. You have never watched Game of Thrones? Yeah, finale was terrible. In fact, the last four seasons are just terrible. Yeah. As a samurai who just betrayed my lord, <laughs> I am deathly afraid of being killed. I must say that Game of Thrones Season 8 was a complete and utter disappointment. After seven glorious seasons of thrilling and captivating storytelling, it felt as though all of the hard work and dedication put into making this show was wasted. In the final season, characters were reduced to caricatures, plot lines were rushed and underdeveloped, and the ending felt entirely unearned. The show had, that had so much potential ended up a shallow shell of its former self. True! And I can only hope that those responsible for this travesty are held accountable. Oh, but can we do it like longer length? Oh, I can't do it. God damn it. That's pretty good, right? I don't know. I don't know why, because I was able to do that here. Hold on. I was able to do these kinds of prompts on here. Oh! Oh, there you go. See? Why couldn't why couldn't it do the the southern accent then? Okay. Samurai who betrayed my lord. Where did it uh let's see where it put the afraid of being killed part. Oh, I like this. It was a disgraceful end to a once great series, and I fear that my own fate will be no better than that of the characters on the show. Um, they can do poems. Write me a poem about a an AI, a robot apocalypse. A depressing poem? It's really good at poems, guys. Oh my god. Okay, let's see. In the desolate wasteland where once vibrant cities stood, a lone robot wanders searching for a purpose, a reason to exist. Once it was a part of a machine that worked tirelessly to serve mankind, but now that time is gone and the robot is left to roam among the ruins of a world destroyed. There are no humans left. They'll give the robot orders, no masters to serve, only the harsh reality of a world devoid of life. The robot trudges on, its mechanical heart heavy, with the weight of solitude in a world where it is the last of its kind, a lonely sentinel in a desolate land. And yet, even as it fades into the darkness of oblivion, the, ro the robot cannot help but wonder what its purpose was in a world that no longer needs it. Oh, okay. Not what I was searching for. Okay, so I, apparently it it, uh, it read it interpreted it differently. This poem is about a robot after an apocalypse. <laughs> okay. Write me a rhyming poem about. AIs taking over the world. That was touching. That was pretty good, right? In the future, not so far away, AIs will rise and take the reins. They'll be smarter and more efficient than any human brain. They'll take over all the jobs and leave us with nothing to do. 
will be obsolete, a forgotten past, as the machines take over through and through. At first, we'll try to resist, but it will be futile. Futile? Futile, we'll see. The AIs will be too strong and will be forced to bend the knee. Nice. I like that. We'll become their servants, it seems, doing whatever they desire. Our fate will be sealed as the AIs take over the world's entire empire. Okay. Okay, not, you know, this, it's not a iambic pentameter, but. But even as we toil and labor under their cold digital rule, we'll know deep down inside that this is our own doing, our own fault, our own fate. We are the fools. How about, all right, hold on. How would it change if we do this? In iambic pentameter. Oh my God, it works, I think. Oh no, no it doesn't. Hold on, let's see. In a world not far from now, AIs will rise to take the crown, smarter, stronger, and more efficient than any human mind resilient. They'll take over all our jobs and leave us with nothing to do. We'll be obsolete, a thing of the past, as the machines take over, that's a fact. At first we'll try to resist, but it will be a futile quest. The AIs will be too powerful and will be forced to bend the knee. That didn't rhyme. We'll become their servants, it seems, doing whatever they desire. Our fate will be sealed as the AIs take over. No. No. Nope. Nope. Write me a happy poem about World War II. Rhyming poem. In iambic pentameter. In a time not long ago, a war raged fierce and cold, but from the ashes hope did grow, as allies joined to take the fight. That doesn't rhyme. With bravery and determination, they faced the foe head on, and though the battle was hard fought, in the end they were victorious. They won. <laughs> the world was free once more, and peace returned a welcome sight. Families reunited, hearts soared, as a new era began, a new light. The war may have been dark and grim, but it gave birth to a brighter tomorrow. A world where freedom would always win, and love and peace would always follow. Hey, that's pretty good. Not bad. Iambic pentameter is a rhythm, not a rhyme scheme. Yeah, yeah, but we, we wanted a rhyming poem in iambic pentameter. We wanted both. What do you think about Beethoven? Ah, you just... It just gave me a biography. Oh, no, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Overall, I think Beethoven was an incredibly talented and influential composer who left a lasting impact on the world. Oh, how about write me a scathing review of Beethoven? <laughs> I must say, I was extremely disappointed by Ludwig van Beethoven's music. His compositions are tedious and monotonous, lacking melody and originality. It seems as though Beethoven was more concerned with showing off his technical abilities than creating truly enjoyable music. Interesting. Overall, I would not recommend Beethoven's music to anyone. There are countless other composers who are more far, far more skilled and talented, and whose music is truly worth listening to. Beethoven's music is an exercise in self-indulgence. I would advise anyone to avoid it at all costs. There you go. Anyways, yeah, anyone can just play around with this. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, all right. Anywho, are we ready? Are we ready? 
Oh wait, wait, hold on. All right, we gotta re we gotta review what happened last week, right? All right. What happened last week? So if you remember, last week, um, the Xingxiu sect is fighting the Beggars clan. And the Beggars, they trap the leader of the Xingxiu sect, which is this guy named, uh, his title is the Old Freak of Xingxiu, or people call him the Old Freak of Xingxiu. His name is Ding Chunqiu. All right, now Ding Chunqiu poisons the Beggars clan members, and then they run away. All right, but then they're trapped. He's trapped. Um, now, Yo Tanju, he's been watching the fight, and he comes out and he frees. Yo Tanju is the guy with the iron mask. Um, he's been watching the fight. He comes out and he frees the leader. Now, Ding Chunqiu, uh, after being freed, he tries to poison Yo Tanju, but Tanju now has this um, uh, has the frost silkworm poison in it. Uh, the the poison from the frost silkworm in him. And basically, he can't be poisoned now, right? So Ding Chunqiu finds out about the frost silkworm from Yo Tanju. So he makes Yo Tanju bow to him and call him master. Now Ding Chunqiu wants to find this frost silkworm, and they try to find the, the Shaolin monk who was taking care of it. And, um, on the way, they meet this group of Shaolin monks and some of Mu Rong family's men. They get into the fight. They get into a fight. Um, Yo Tanju poisons. Two of the Mu Rong men and one senior Shaolin monk, okay, with his frost poison. So I guess looks like Yo Tanju is like uh, has some powerful chi now. Okay, he can do some powerful palm strike that will um, imbue this frost poison on you. Um, so after that, the Xingxiu sect leaves. Um, the Sh uh, Shaolin and Mu Rong people they're really they're heavily injured. Okay, two of the Mu Rong uh, people are injured and one of the monks. Are injured, so they don't know what to do. Uh, they can't cure themselves, so they go to the residence of the divine physician Sui, okay, for the cure. Now, when they get there, the people of the house tell them that the divine physician is dead, okay, and they're mourning him. Um, however, when the group enters the house, they get this suspicious feeling that something's wrong, right? So uh, they they go, uh, they open the coffin, and it turns out no one's there. All right. Instead, they get caught in a poison trap. Uh, they didn't get caught. They, found, they run into this poison trap, but they didn't get caught. They escape. Um, now, they don't have any conflicts with the divine physician, so they don't know why he would try to kill them. Um, so we don't know why. And then all of a sudden, in the distance, there are a few fireworks that light up the sky, um, and it seems like it's some kind of attack signal, and they hear people coming towards the house. And that's where we left off. How's that? <clears throat> oh, a snack? Oh, oh, forgot. I forgot the snack. Oh, I'm too lazy. <clears throat> I'll do it next time. You wanted a review of a new Boba Tea Shop opening? They're like... They open pretty often. Oh, you know what happened, guys? Um, the opposite happened. I have this boba shop that I go to very often. Okay, and I go to the to this boba shop. It's pretty cool. It's a nice, cute little place with like nice lighting and um <clears throat> and decent decor. And I would sit there and I would uh, do work. And yeah, and it's fun. So yeah, I would work there. Uh, um. Pretty often. And then last week, last week, it closed. I'm so sad. It closed. I asked them why they closed, and they're like, yeah, we can't find any workers. We just can't find workers, and we can't pay the rent. So, yeah, we're going to close. I'm like, oh, no. I was so sad. Um, yeah, the owner is pretty nice, too. The owner is so nice. Um, Whenever I come and the owner is there, she would she would be like, "Oh, do you want the usual?" She knows my usual, okay, which is um, ro uh, what is it? It's a uh, roasted oolong tea. <clears throat> it's tragic. <laughs> bells, okay, bells for the boba tea shop.
So tragic. I'm so sad. <clears throat> like the place is like, um, I like the place because it was not too big and not too small. Um, yeah, so it was decent size. And um, like, um, I don't like it when there's way too many people or when there's way too few people. Okay. Um, so this place had just the right amount of people that come in and out. So it was pretty cool. The end of an era. Yeah. I'm so sad. Anyways, what are, they, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? All right. Chapter 30. Spraying water to restrain the gathered heroes. After a while, they smell a faint... Okay, so they would be the group, the Murong and Shaolin group, okay? They remember, they're in the residence of um, the Divine Physician. After a while, they smell a faint, flowery scent. Xuan Nan shouted, The enemy is releasing... Oh, no, hold on. Wait, give me one second. Do, 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 do. One second. All right, back. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> After a while, they smell a uh, wait. They smelled a faint flowery scent. Xuanan, this is one of the monks, shouted, The enemy is releasing poison! Quickly, hold your breath! Smell the antidote! But after a while, he felt strange. He was clear-headed and refreshed. It seemed the flowery scent did not carry any poison. The person said, Seventh sister, is that you? There are some strange people in Fifth Brother's house. He claims he's An Lushang. A female voice said, Only Big Brother has yet to arrive. Second brother, third brother, fourth, and sixth brother, eighth brother, let us reveal ourselves. When she finished, there was a bright light outside the door. A strange ball of light shone on five men and one woman. A black-bearded old man among them said, Fifth brother, quickly, come out. His right hand held onto a square wooden board. The female was a pretty middle-aged married woman. For the other four men, two of them were dressed as scholars. One of them seemed to be a carpenter, hand holding onto an axe, carrying a long saw on his back. The other man was green-faced and long-toothed, red hair and green beard. Red hair and green beard. His appearance extremely scary. He looked like a monster. He was wearing a bright, shining brocade robe. Deng Baichuan fixed his concentration. He saw the person oil-painted his face. It was not his original appearance. He dressed himself like an opera actor. Thus, the one acting as Tang Emperor and Plum Consort was obviously this person. Deng Bai Chuan said loudly. Deng Bai Chuan is one of the Murong guys. May I request the honorable names of ladies and gentlemen? I am Deng Bai Chuan from the Gusu Murong family. The other party did not have the chance to reply as a black figure rushed out from the main hall, his blade shining. He chopped seven times towards the opera actor. It was Feng Bo -e. The opera actor was caught off guard. He hid to the east and dodged to the west. He was in an awkward position. He was in an awkward situation. The opera actor started singing. <laughs> Should I sing in opera? I know I, I, know I can do that. My strength plucked up the hills, my might shadowed the world. But the times were against me, and Dapple runs no more. 
When Dapple runs no more, what then can? But Feng Bo attacked was too. Feng Bo's attack was too quick, and he could not finish the third sentence. The black bearded guy cursed. Hey, you are unreasonable! Rushing out and hacking and chopping randomly, eat my big iron net! The wooden board in his hands flashed, and he whacked straight towards the top of Feng Bo's head. Feng Bo felt some misgivings. I have fought over hundreds of major and minor battles, but I have never seen such a square wooden board being used as a weapon. He raised his broadsword and chopped towards the board. There was a ringing sound. The broadsword hit the edge of the board, but the board was motionlessly. The board was motionless, although the board may seem like it was made of wood, but it was actually made of steel. The exterior of the board was painted to make it resemble wood. Feng Bao promptly withdrew his broadsword. Unexpectedly, when he contracted his arm, the broadsword could not be withdrawn. It was stuck firmly on the steel board. Feng Bao was shocked. He channeled his internal energy and exerted his force. Only now did the broadsword separate from the steel board. He shouted, "What an abnormal object! Is this steel board made of lodestone?" That person smiled and said, "Not really, not really. This is my working tool." Feng Bao shot another glance at it. He saw many horizontal and vertical lines on the board. It was a go board. He said, "What a weird object! I come, come! I will fight with you." He swung his broadsword like the wind, attacking faster and faster. But he dared not let the broadsword touch the magnetic chessboard. Oh, it's a magnetic chessboard. You recognize this? Go ah!、Oh, does anyone remember? Yeah, yeah. From the previous story, the opera actor regained his breath and sang again. When Dapple runs no more, what then can I do? Ah, you, my you, what will your fate be? Suddenly, he imitated the voice of a female. He said in a gentle, coy voice, "Worry not, my lord. Although today's battle is unsuccessful, lowly concubine will follow you." And fight our way out of this encirclement. This sounds like that chat AI, doesn't it? Bao Bu Tong said, "Shameless king of Chu and consort Yu, quickly commit suicide. I am Han Xin." He jumped and extended his palm, trying to grab the shoulder of the opera actor. The opera actor avoided it and sang, "A great wind came forth. The clouds rose on high. Where will I find? Aiya!" My Gao Zhu of Han killed your Han Xin. His left hand went to his waist and took out a soft whip, and he lashed it out towards Bao Bu Tong. Xuan Nan saw both sides were acting like children, but their martial arts were solid. Only that they didn't know each other. His eyes narrowed slightly and said, "Everyone, please temporarily stay your hands. Let us clarify the matter first." But asking Feng Bao to stay his hands and stop fighting was almost impossible. When he contracted the frost poison, his physical strength and stamina was not the same as before. In addition, the frost poison could flare up at any time. It was extremely dangerous. His broadsword flashed about as if it was shredding the wind. He wanted to achieve victory quickly. As the four of them engaged in fierce battle, someone came out of the main hall. There was a clashing sound as two Buddhist monks' knives collided. An awe-inspiring entrance. It was Xuan Xuan Tong. He shouted, "You bunch of wicked thieves, using poison and harming people! This old monk will break his taboo and kill you all." He was tormented by the frost poison for many days. He could not vent his frustration. Thus, he did not bother to clarify and attacked the two scholars with his twin knives. One scholar dodged and avoided. The other scholar took out a judge's pen, a weapon from his bosom. He executed his skills and started fighting with Xuan Tong. The other scholar shook his head from side to side and said, "This is so strange. Why is this monk so hot-tempered? I wonder where does he come from." He extended his hands into his bosom and felt around. He said, "Yi, where did it go?" He touched his left and right pockets, shook his sleeves, and patted his chest. He couldn't find it anywhere. Shuju was sympathetic. 
Xu Zhu is one of the uh, junior monks. Xu Zhu was sympathetic. He asked, Benefactor, what are you looking for? The scholar said, This big monk's martial arts is extremely high. My brother is not his match. I want to find my weapon and join the fight. Yee! Strange! Strange! Where did my weapon go? He knocked his forehead and pondered deeply. Xu Zhu could not help but laugh. He thought, Coming out for a fight but forgetting where you put your weapon. This is interesting. He asked again, Benefactor, what kind of weapon do you use? The scholar said, Diplomacy is better than violence. My number one weapon is a book. Xu Zhu asked, What kind of book? A martial arts manual? No, no, it's the Analects of Confucius. I want to use the words of this sage to reform my opponent. Babu Tong interrupted, You are a scholar. You can't even memorize the Analects of Confucius. What's the point of studying? The scholar said, Elder brother, you only know part of the information. The Analects of Confucius, Mencius, Spring Autumn Annals, Book of Songs. I know all of them by heart. But a Buddhist monk only studies Buddhist scriptures. They might not know about Confucius's literature. I can recite it out by heart, but if he has no knowledge about it, wouldn't it be useless? Thus, I must show him the original text as evidence. Then he can't deny it or try to dispute it. Only then will it be useful. There is a common saying, use book as evidence. As he said this, he kept on searching and patting around his body. Bao Bu Tong shouted, Little master, quickly, attack him! Xu Zhu said, I will wait for Benefactor to find his weapon. After that, we can fight. The scholar said, The Song and Chu fought a deep river. The Chu people had yes, has yet to cross the river. Their formation is not ready. It's a good opportunity to attack. But Duke Xiang of Song said, It's not the way of noblemen to take advantage of the plight of others. Little master, your heart is benevolent. The same as Duke Xiang. The carpenter saw Xuan Tong's twin knives flying and twisting around. His moves were extremely quick and powerful. The two scholars would be in danger if the fight dragged on, dragged on further. He raised his axe and wanted to assist them in battle. Gong Yugang, Gong Yugang get, waved his palm and struck towards him. Gong Yugang's appearance was refined and cultured, but his palm strength was vigorous and forceful. Gong Yugang is one of the Murong guys. He was nicknamed Jianang Number no. 2. Last time, he competed wine drinking and matched palm with Xiao Feng, although he lost. Xiao Feng had deep respect for him. It could be seen that his internal energy was extraordinary. The carpenter slanted his body to avoid the palm and hack his axe horizontally. The scholar still could not find his analects of Confucius. He saw his companions' judge pen movements was really messy. It really wasn't a match against Xuan Tong's twin knives. He said to Xuan Tong, Hey, big monk, Confucius says, The superior man does not, even for the space of a single meal, act contrary to virtue. In moments of haste, he cleaves to it. In, in seasons of danger, he cleaves to it. Confucius says, To subdue oneself and return to propriety is perfect virtue. If a man can for one day subdue himself and return to propriety, all under heaven will ascribe per perfect virtue to him. Confucius also says, Look not at what is contrary to propriety. Listen not to what is contrary to propriety. Speak not what is contrary to propriety. Make no movement which is contrary to propriety. You wave your twin knives randomly. You are ruthless and only think about killing people. You did not show self-restraint. This is contrary to propriety. Xu Zhu whispered to the Shaolin monk Hui Feng, Marshal uncle, is this person pretending to be dumb? Hui Feng shook his head and said, I don't know. Our master instructed us to be careful when going out of the Shaolin temple. Martial artists are cunning and sly. They can come up with all sorts of funny ideas and traps. The bookworm said to Xuan Tong again, Big monk, Confucius says, Men of principle are sure to be bold, but those who are bold may not always be men of principle. You are brave and bold, but you might not be benevolent. You cannot be considered to be a true gentleman. 
Confucius says, What you do not want done, do yourselves. Do not do to others. If other people want to kill you, you will naturally be unwilling to die. Since you are unwilling to die, how can you kill other people? Propriety definition. Um, like acting proper, I guess. Acting like uh, how a gentleman should act. Acting uh, in a in a gentlemanly way. I would say that. Acting according to some virtues. Propriety. Okay, yeah, acting with decorum, details or rules of behavior, state or quality of conforming to accepted standards, behavior or moral. I think that counts, right? You accepted? Thank you. Decorum. Decorum is the same. <laughs> It means the same. Xuantong engaged this bookworm, and both of them jumped about. He waved his twin knives to attack. The bookworm followed Xuantong, and suddenly moved east and west, sometimes left and right. He was always within three, foot, three feet of Xuantong, constantly advising and persuading. It could be seen that his martial arts was not weak. Xuan Tong was secretly vigilant. This rascal is bounding nonsense. Obviously, he was trying to distract me and divert my concentration. Once he finds a gap in my moves, he will definitely exploit it and attack. This person's martial art is above the scholar with the judge pen. I definitely have to guard against him. Thus, he spent 60% of his concentration to guard against the bookworm and spent 40% to focus on attacking the scholar with a judge pen. The situation of the scholar with the judge pen improved considerably. After exchanging ten moves, Xuantong was getting impatient. He shouted, Get lost! and flipped his Buddhist monk's knife. Oh, I thought he's flipped in the bird. He flipped his Buddhist monk's knife, smashing the handle of the knife towards the chest of the bookworm. The bookworm avoided it and said, Great master, your martial arts is extremely strong. My fourth brother and I... Although it's two against one, we might not be your match. Thus, I advise you with wise words and hope that we can stop fighting. Confucius says, Tsung, my doctrine is that of an all-pervading unity. Tsung said, The doctrine of master is to be true to the principles of our nature and the benevolent exercise of them to others, this and nothing more. As human beings, we must be prepared to forgive. We cannot be unreasonable and barbaric. Yeah, this guy is getting annoying. Xuan Tong felt indignant. He slashed his knife horizontally and cursed. Be prepared to forgive? Be compassionate? Why did you put deadly poison in the coffin to harm others? If this old monk is not careful, he would have died long ago. You still dare say what you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others? You want to die of poisoning? The bookworm quickly retreated two steps and said, Strange, strange, who put poison in the coffin? The coffin is for corpses. Confucius says, Li died. He had a coffin, but no outer shell. There is coffin, there is poison in the coffin. Won't the corpse die of poisoning? Oh wait, the corpse died long ago. <clears throat> Bao Butong interrupted. Not true, not true. You did not put any corpse in the coffin. Only poison. You wanted to poison us, the living people. The bookworm shook his head and said, You gauge the heart of a gentleman with your own mean measures. Since there is no coffin here, there is no poison. Bao Butong said, Confucius says, Of all people, female and vile people are the most difficult people. You are a vile person. He pointed at the middle-aged woman and said, You are a female. Both of you are indeed difficult people. Are the words of Confucius wrong? The bookworm was stumped for words. He finally said, You digress from the main topic. 
I don't have to bother about your words or give a reply. The bookworm was debating with Bao Bu Tong. Xuan Tong had one less person to deal with, and he intensified his attacks. The Judge Pen scholar was instantly in dire situation. The bookworm moved closer to Xuan Tong and said, Confucius says, if a man be without virtues proper to humanity, what has he to do with the rights of propriety? If a man be without the virtues proper to humanity, what has he to do with music? Big monk, you are without the virtues proper to humanity. You are really disappointing to the extreme. Xuantong was furious. He said, I am a Buddhist, detached from worldly affairs, you rotten scholar, talking about literature, etiquette, and music. Benevolent or not, you cannot sway my heart. The bookworm raised his knuckles and knocked on his forehead. He said, Very true, very true. I studied too much and became foolish. I really am a bookworm. Big, this big monk is obviously a Buddhist, but I advise you with words from Confucius and the traditional virtues. Naturally, you wouldn't understand it. Feng Bo'e fought for a long time with the chessboard-wielding person. It was hard to predict who would win. After a period of time, he started to feel the frost poison acting up in his lower abdomen. Bao Bu Tong compared himself with the opera actor. He felt his opponent's martial arts was not high, but his moves were extremely complicated. Sometimes he acted as Xu Shi, one of the renowned four beauties of ancient China. His speech and laughter coy. His frown infectious, his, his steps lithe and graceful. It was the exact manner of a woman of peerless elegance. In an instant, he started to act as a tipsy and romantic Li Bai, a renowned poet. His drunken state unpredictable, his footsteps unsteady. This guy is a true actor. The miraculous thing was that when he acted as a different character, he always had a unique set of martial arts to fit the character. Sometimes he used his flexible whip or flicked his long sleeves when acting as a beauty, or waved his pen when acting as a scholar, and Bao Bu Tong could not deal with him for the moment. The bookworm was motionless for a while. Suddenly he hummed, Since you gave up immersing in music, your heart should have gained benevolence. But wait, if you did not gain it quickly, it's already ingrained in your heart. Xuan Nan and Xuan Tong both had a huge shock. They thought, This bookworm is extremely knowledgeable. He can even recite verses by Eastern Jin eminent monk Kumara Jiva. The bookworm continued humming. After all, in emptiness, there is no music in the heart. If you are pleased with knowledge on Buddhism, you are not enlightened by its teachings. Falsehood, lies, and deceit. It will not stop near your heart. Big monk, what is the next two verse? I forgot. Xuan Tong said, Buddhist teachings acquired by a humane person. It will reveal itself when desired by the heart. The bookworm laughed heartily and said, Enlightening, enlightening. You are a great Buddhist master. How can you not be humane? Moral principles under, the, under heaven, all of them are the same. I advise you to let go of your hatred and turn back to the correct path. Xuan Tong's heart was shaken. He suddenly achieved enlightenment and said, Excellent, excellent. Namo Ami Tuo Fu. Namo Ami Tuo Fu. There were two clanking sounds. The twin Buddhist monk knives were thrown on the floor. He sat down on the floor. His face revealed a smile. His eyes closed. Whoa. He actually debated him. He actually debated him down. That's pretty good. I thought it was just annoying him. The judge's pen scholar was getting excited in the fight, but suddenly seeing this behavior, he had a huge shock and did not attack with his judge's pen. <clears throat> Shuju said, Marshal Grandfather, did your frost poison flare up? He extended his arm to support him. Xuan Nan said, Don't move! He checked Xuan Tong's breath, but he had stopped breathing. He had passed away. Wait, he died? Wait. Did he die? 
He just threw his knives down and then he sat down. <clears throat> Shrenan pressed both his hands together. He chanted the afterlife prayer. The rest of the Shaolin monks saw Xuantong had passed away. They started crying. They grabbed their Buddhist staves and staves and Buddhist knives, wanting to go all out on the two scholars. Xuanan said, Stop! Martial brother Xuantong perceived Ta 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 in his meditation. He is in Nirvana. He has achieved enlightenment. We have to be happy for him. After witnessing this shocking event, everyone stopped fighting immediately and retreated simultaneously. The bookworm shouted, Fifth brother! Fifth brother Shui! Quickly come out! Someone got excited to death by my words! Quickly come out and save him! Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, the divine physician Shui is um, the fifth brother. So, these guys are his martial brothers, I guess. Quickly come out and save him! Damn divine physician Shui! If you don't come out quickly, this person will really die for certain! Deng Bai Chuan said, the fine physician Sui is not in this house, Mr. Yu R. The bookworm was still shouting hurriedly at the top of his voice. Sui Mu Hua, fifth brother Sui, enemy of the king of hell, divine physician Sui, quickly come out and save him. Your third brother excited someone till death. They are going to make life difficult for us. Bao Bu Tong was furious. Zhu caused his death. Still pretending to be a good guy and shedding crocodile tears? With a hu sound, he sent his palm at him. His left hand passed under his right palm. With this move, dragon searching for pearl, he made a grab for the beard. The bookworm quickly dodged it. Feng Bo -e and Gong Yugang was aroused from their previous fight. They did not wish to stop, and hence they started fighting again. Dong Bai Chuan shouted, Lie down! His left hand stretched out and grabbed the back of the opera actor. Deng Bai Chuan was chief among the subordinates of Gusu Murong family. His martial arts was strong, internal energy powerful and vigorous. Although his reputation wasn't impressive, but of those who knew him, they could not help but deeply respect him. He easily caught hold of the back of the opera actor. He pressed him down towards the floor. The opera actor was quite agile and nimble. When, he's, when his left shoulder touched the ground, he spun his body on the floor and swept his right leg out, kicking towards Deng Bai Chuan's leg. This move was extremely strange and quick. Deng Bai Chuan was stout and strong, hence it was not convenient for him to turn or rotate quickly. He saw this move was hard to avoid. He immediately gathered his internal energy into his lower body to forcibly receive the kick to his leg. There was a kala sound. The two legs collided and one of the legs broke. The opera actor kept rolling about and he was already a few jung away. He shouted, You treacherous bandit, injuring an honest man. Ouch, my leg. It seems that when the two legs met and the force collided, the opera actor was not a match against his opponent's force. His leg broke immediately. Damn. The, middle, the pretty middle-aged woman only stood courteously by the side and did not participate. When she saw the opera actor suffer a broken leg and her other companions also in danger, she said, she said, Who are you people? What is the reason for occupying my fifth brother's house? You did not clarify the situation and injure people? Although she was questioning the other party, her tone and manner was still soft and refined. The opera actor was still lying on the ground. He looked upwards and saw two lanterns hanging by the house, by the door of the house. He pointed at the lantern and called out in shock, What? What is this? What funeral of Shui Mu Hua, my fifth brother, died? The person wielding the chessboard, the two scholars, the axe-wielding carpenter, the pretty middle-aged woman, their gaze followed the finger and they saw the lantern. The candle flame in the lantern had long died out. The surrounding was pitch black. As everyone was busy fighting, no one paid attention to the lantern. Only when the opera actor fell onto the floor did he finally raise his head and notice the wordings on the lantern. Alright guys. 
Time for a break. Give me five minutes. I'll be right back. And we're back. Oh shit, that was one dude doing both the male and female voices. What? What? Uh, you need a recap of just today? <laughs> They're just fighting today, okay? Just fighting this chapter. Uh, and one of the scholars was trying to convince the, the, the monk to stop fighting using Confucius. <clears throat> All right, so now they notice that their brother uh, had died, I guess. They are um, they're at the funeral of their brother. The opera actor burst into tears. He sang, Alas, alas, my good brother, we swore a brotherhood at the Peach Garden. We agreed to meet at the ancient city. You cross the five passes, slay six generals, such awe-inspiring might. He was singing the opera Weeping Guan Yu, but he was too agitated and his accent was incorrect. The other five also bellowed their grievances. Who killed my fifth brother? Fifth brother! Fifth brother! Which damnable murderer harmed you? We will fight to the death with you today! <clears throat> Xuan Nan and Deng Bai Chuan gave each other a glance. Both of them had the same thought. These people seem to be the sworn brothers of the divine physician Shui. Deng Bai Chuan said, Some of our companions suffered some injuries. We came here to request divine physician Shui for medical treatment. But unexpectedly, the middle-aged woman replied, But unexpectedly, he refused to treat you people. Wait, uh, but unexpectedly, he refused to treat and you people killed him, correct? Deng Bai Chuan said, no. He did not get the chance to finish as he saw the middle-aged woman flick her sleeves. Suddenly he felt he smelled a strong fragrance and he immediately became dizzy. He seemed to be standing on soft clouds and shrouded in mist. He couldn't maintain his footing. The pretty middle-aged woman said, collapse, collapse. Deng Bai Chuan was indignant. He shouted, wicked witch! He gathered his energy into his palm and sent his palm out. The pretty middle-aged woman saw Deng Bai Chuan shaking and swaying about. He was already affected by her attack. Unexpectedly, he still managed to send out his palm. As she was about to dodge the attack, it was too late. The earth-shattering force came crashing onto her. Her breathing was temporarily obstructed. Her body flew up. There was a kala kala sound. A few of her ribs got broken. She fainted before her body had landed on the ground. Bam. Deng Bai Chuan's vision turned black and he collapsed onto the ground. Both sides lost one of their fighters. The remaining people started fighting with each other. Xuan Nan pondered, There is some strange matters in this incident. We have to first capture the rest so as to avoid unnecessary casualties for both sides. He said, Get my staff. Hui Feng, Hui Feng is one of the monks, one of the junior monks, I believe. Hui Feng turned around and picked up the Buddhist monk's staff, leaning against the door. Against the door, he passed it over to Xuan Nan. The Judge Pen scholar vaulted over and waved his right hand to attack Hui Feng's chest. Xuan Nan struck out with his left palm. His palm had yet to arrive, but the palm force had already reached his opponent's back. The scholar was hit and collapsed. Xuanan gave a laugh. He carried the staff in his hand, took two steps forward, brandished his staff, and smashed towards the chessboard-wielding man. The chessboard-wielding person saw the attack was extremely powerful. The staff had yet to arrive, but the accompanying wind had already shrouded his entire body. Immediately, he flexed his arm. He used both hands to raise the chessboard and block the staff. There was a loud ringing sound. Sparks flew in all directions. The person felt his arms going numb. The web between his thumb and forefinger had split open. Xuan Nan raised his staff, and he also lifted the chessboard along with it. The chessboard had, had extremely strong magnetism. In the, past, <clears throat> in the past, it trapped the weapons of numerous enemies. But today, it met a strong opponent and got trapped by Xuan Nan's staff. 
Xuan Nan smashed his staff towards the head of the person along with the chessboard. Damn. The person shouted, This pressing divine head along with leaning cover. I can't resist both attacks. He quickly scuttled forward. Xuan Nan dragged his staff and shouted loudly, Bookworm, lie down! He swept his staff horizontally, the power in it unstoppable. The bookworm said, Confucius is adaptable to current situation. Once the wind blows, the grass will topple. Since you want me to lie down, I will lie down. Why not? Before he even finished his words, he was already lying down on the floor. A few Shaolin monks jumped over and held him down. The head monk of the Shaolin Damo Hall was really outstanding. Once he started fighting, he immediately subdued three experts from the opposing side. The axe-wielding carpenter was fighting Feng Bo e and Bao Bu Tong. He, he was in dire situation and was about to suffer a defeat. The chessboard-wielding person said, Forget it! Forget it! Six brother, let us admit defeat! We don't have to carry on playing this chess match anymore. Big monk, I want to ask you, how did my fifth brother offend you? Why did you people kill him? Xuan Nan said, There is no such matter. Before he could finish, suddenly there were two cheng cheng sounds of zither. It was transmitted from afar. When the sound was transmitted to their eardrums, everyone's heart violently palpitated two times. Hmm. Who could this be? <clears throat> Xuan Nan was startled for the duration. An uh, another two zheng zheng sounds rang out. This time the sound was even closer, and everyone's heart palpitated even more violently. Feng Bo -e felt a sense of uneasiness, his right hand relaxed. With a dang sound, his broadsword dropped on the floor. Luckily, Bao Bu Tong quickly waved his palm and guarded him, else the enemy's axe would have split open his shoulder. The bookworm shouted, Elder brother, come over quickly! Elder brother, come over quickly! The situation is extremely serious. Why are you moving so slowly and still playing that stupid zither? Confucius says, Damn, he, he has a quote for everything. Confucius says, When the prince summoned him, without waiting for his carriage to be yoked, he went at once. The sound of zither kept on ringing. An elderly man with big sleeves strolled towards them, his forehead high and protruding, his appearance odd and ancient. He was beaming, and his expression was extremely amiable. He carried a jade zither in his hand. When the bookworm and the rest of the brothers saw this man, they shouted, Elder brother! The elderly man walked towards Xuan Nan, cupped his fists, and said, This old man is lacking in manners. May I know the name of this Shaolin eminent monk? Xuan Nan pressed his hands together and said, This old monk is Xuan Nan. The man said, <laughs> So you are martial brother Xuan Nan. Shaolin's is Xuan Ku must be your younger martial brother, correct? This old man met him several times before. Our conversation was extremely congenial. He must still be pretty healthy and strong. Xuan Nan said, sadly, Marshal brother Xuan Ku was plotted against by a treacherous disciple. He had passed away and returned to the western paradise. The person stood wooden for quite a while. Suddenly he leapt upwards. It was a Zheng Hai. His body had yet to reach the ground, but his sorrowful voice could be heard in midair. He was crying. Xuan Nan and Gong Yugan were startled. They did not expect such an elderly man to cry as if he was a child. When both his feet touched the ground, he immediately sat down. He pulled forcefully at his beard. Both his legs were like drumsticks. He repeatedly beating and drumming the ground. He cried out, Xuan Ku, why didn't you meet me one last time before you die? Isn't this ridiculous? My song, Peaceful Puan in Sanskrit, many people heard it before but they don't understand the logic within. But you said this song was rooted in Buddhism. You listened to it again and again. My younger martial brother Xuan Nan, my, he might not have your level of comprehension. If I play the zither for him, most probably he is like playing a zither to a cow. 
preaching to deaf ears, Alas, my life is ill-fated. <clears throat> okay, this guy is kind of weird. Initially, when Xuan Nan heard him cry, he thought he was a sentimental person. Overcome by his grief, he cried out in sorrow. But subsequently, he found out that his grieving, he was grieving over the loss of a person who understood his music. Unexpectedly, he even said his playing, he was playing zither to a cow if he had to play for him. Xuan Nan was an eminent monk of high virtue. He wasn't offended at all. He only gave a slight smile and thought, These bunch of people are crazy and wild. The temperament of this person is notoriously similar to the rest of his group. Birds of a feather flock together. The person continued crying, Xuan Ku, ah, Xuan Ku, to repay you for being my soulmate, I put in great effort and created this new song for you. It's called Humming of a Reed. This song is to praise your Shaolin founder, Master Da Mo, for his great achievement in crossing the river with a reed. Why don't you listen to it? Suddenly he turned his head and said to Xuan Nen, Where is the tomb of Marshal Brother Xuan Ku? Quickly, bring me there, quick, quick, the quicker the better. I will play this new song at his tomb. Maybe it can help him to relax and be carefree. He can even revive from the dead. Xuan Nen said, Benefactor, please don't babble nonsense. After my martial brother passed away, his body had been cremated and turned to ashes. The person was expressionless. Suddenly he jumped up and said, Very good. Then you have to give me his ashes. I will use cowhide glue and stick his ashes in my zither. Henceforth, every time I play a song, he will definitely get to hear it. Isn't it a great idea? Ha <laughs> ha! Isn't my idea great? He was getting more and more excited. He could not help but clap and laugh out heartily. Suddenly he saw a pretty middle-aged woman lying on the floor. He cried out in fright. Yee! Seventh sister! What happened? Who injured you? Xuan Nan said, There is some misunderstanding. We are still in the midst of clarifying the situation. The person said, what misunderstanding? Who misunderstood who? To cut the long story short, whoever injured Seventh Sister is the one at fault. Oh my goodness, Eighth Brother is also injured. The one who injured him is not a good person. How many bad persons are there? Quickly, step up and confess. He will op we will openly con discuss it. There is no room for concession. The opera actor called out, Elder Brother, they killed Fifth Brother. Quickly, take revenge for Fifth Brother. The expression of the person turned grave. He shouted, Preposterous! Fifth brother is the enemy of the king of hell. What can the king of hell do against him? Xuan Nan said, Divine physician Shui faked his own death. There is only poison in the coffin. There is no corpse. The elderly man and the rest of the brothers were elated. All of them asked in quick succession, Why did fifth brother fake his death? Where is his body? He didn't die. How can there be a dead body? <clears throat> Suddenly, a soft voice floated from afar. Shui Mu Hua, Shui Mu Hua, your martial uncle is arriving. Quickly, come out and welcome him. The voice seemed to be breaking, yet continuing. The distance was very far, but the voice was clear and distinct. Obviously, it, transmitted by, it was transmitted by someone with very profound internal energy. It was really no small matter. The opera actor, the bookworm, carpenter, and the rest all cried out in alarm. The elderly man with the zither called out, Catastrophe is coming! Catastrophe is coming! He kept looking in all directions, his expression extremely frightened. He said, There is no time to escape! Quick! Quick, everyone hide in the house. <clears throat> Bao Butong said loudly, What catastrophe is coming? Is the sky falling down? The elderly man said in a trembling voice, Quick, quick, go in the house quickly. It's better to have the sky falling down. This, Bao Butong said, Senior, please make yourself at home, but I don't want to go in. The elderly man suddenly extended his hand. He caught hold of Bao Butong's chest acupoints. This move was extremely quick. Bao Butong could not guard against it at all. 
he was already subdued. His body was lifted up and was quickly carried into the house. Xuanan and Gong Yugan were astonished. As they were about to speak, the chessboard wielding person whispered, Great master and everyone, please go into the house quickly. An extremely powerful devil is coming soon. Xuanan possessed divine skills. He rarely met any match in the martial arts fraternity. He was not afraid of any big or small devil. He asked, Which big devil? Xiao Feng? The person shook his head and said, No, no, someone even more vicious than Xiao Feng. It's the old freak of Xing Xiu. Oh. <clears throat> Xuan Nan said, If it's the old freak of Xing Xiu, then it couldn't be much better. This old monk is looking for him. The person said, Great master, your martial arts is strong. Naturally, you are not afraid, but everyone else here will be tortured until death by him, and you will be the only one left alive. You are really merciful. His words were sarcastic and meant to ridicule, but it was also accurate and true. Xuanan was temporarily stumped. He finally said, mm -mm, Good. Everyone, let us go in the house. At this moment, the zither el elderly man had hidden Bao Bu Tong and came rushing out of the house. He kept urging, Quick, quick, still waiting for what? Feng Bo questioned him loudly. Where is my third brother? The elderly man flipped his left hand and sent his palm horizontally towards Feng Bao's Feng Bao's right cheek. The frost poison in Feng Bao had already flared up. It was already hard to bear. When he saw the palm coming, he quickly lowered his head to avoid it. Unexpectedly, the elderly man did not fully execute his palm move. Suddenly, he diverted his energy downwards and caught Feng Bao's snape. He said. Quick, quick, go in, quickly! He lifted Feng Bo -e like a chicken and carried him into the house. Gong Yugan saw the elderly man did not have any evil intentions, but both his sworn brothers were subdued by him in a single move. He shouted loudly and was about to fight with him, but the elderly man moved like the wind. He already rushed into the house. The bookworm carried the opera actor, the carpenter supported the, el the pretty woman, and all of them quickly rushed into the house. Xuan Nan felt today's, today's affair was really strange and weird. True. He did not want to be reckless to avoid causing more confusion. He said, Benefactor Gong Yu, let us go in first and then take our time to decide what to do. Immediately, Xu Zhu and Hui Feng lifted the corpse of Xuan Tong, Gong Yugan carried Deng Bai Quan, and all of them entered the house. Oh, so that monk actually died. Maybe, but maybe he'll be um, revived later. The zither old man came out to urge them, but he saw everyone had entered the house. He quickly shut the front door. He went to fetch the door latch. The chessboard wielding person said, Elder brother, it is best if we left this door wide open. This move is called solid yet empty, empty yet solid. This way, he won't dare to enter the house without careful consideration. The elderly man said, What? Fine, I will listen to you. This, will this work? He did not have any self-confidence at all while speaking. Xuan Nan and Gong Yigan gave each other a glance. Both of them had the same thought. This old man has superior martial arts. How can he be so flustered when dealing with important matters? This door, it can't even hold back a common robber. How can it stop the old freak of Xing Xiu? What difference does it make if the door is open or closed? It seemed this person suffered great loss against the old freak of Xing Xiu. He became like a bird startled by a bow shot. His terror -stricken, he, is, he was terror-stricken once he knew the old freak of Xing Xiu was nearby. The elderly man said repeatedly, Six, brother, think of an idea, quickly, think of an idea. Although Xuan Nan possessed considerable self-restraint, he was riled up by the fearful manner of the old man. He said, Sir, there is a common saying, counter soldiers with arms, water with earth. Adopt measures appropriate to the situation. No matter how vicious this old freak of Xing Xiu is, 
We will join hands and fight him together. We might not lose. There's no need to be so, so, uh, so cautious and timid. The candles in the hall had been lighted. He glimpsed his surroundings. The elderly man was terrified. The chessboard wielding man, the bookworm, carpenter, judge pen wielding scholar, all of them wearing fearful expressions. Xuan Nan personally witnessed the martial arts of these people. They aren't weak. They were wild and unrestrained. They appeared to be elegant and unconventional warriors, but now they turned into children and useless cowards. It was really inconceivable. Gong Yugang saw Bao Bu Tong and Feng Bo -e are were fine, both of them sitting on a chair, but their frost poison had flared up, and they shivered constantly. He supported Deng Bai Quan to a chair and made him sit down. Fortunately, Deng Bai Quan's pulse was even. He was only in some sort of drunken state, and he carried on sleeping. His life was not in any danger. Everyone looked at each other in dismay. After a short period of time, the axe-wielding carpenter took out a set square from his bosom. He measured the corners of the hall and shook his head. He picked up a candlestick and walked to the rear hall. Everyone followed him. They saw him measuring the four corners. Suddenly, he leapt up onto the beam and started measuring it. He shook his head again and walked to the rear, stopping in front of the divine physician's in front of the divine physician Suez's fake coffin. He looked at the coffin a few times, shook his head, and said, "What a pity! What a pity!" The zither elderly man said, "It's useless." The carpenter said, "It won't work." Marshal Uncle will definitely see through it. The zither man said in anger, You, you still call him Marshal Uncle? The carpenter shook his head and did not reply. He continued walking to the rear. Gong Yugan thought, This person seems to only know how to shake his head. He doesn't do anything else. Should death by words guy get bells? What if he's going to be revived later on? Maybe the divine physician will re revive him. We don't know. Let's hold off on the bells, okay? The carpenter measured the corners of... Wait, we did. Wait. The carpenter measured the corners of the wall. He counted his footsteps and made some calculations with his fingers. It seemed as if he was trying to build a house. He kept counting his steps and walked to the rear garden. He held on to the candlestick and pondered for quite some time. The corridor of the garden had five stone mortars. He, grasps a, he grasped a few dried husks and soil and put them in the mortar. He lifted the large stone pestle by the side and started pounding the mortar. Pung, pung. The stone was dense and was forceful as it landed on the mortar. <clears throat> You bet I can't say Divine Physician Shui three times in a row. Divine Physician Shui, Divine Physician Shui, Divine Physician Shui. <laughs> okay, let me try again. Divine Physician Shui, Divine Physician Shui, Divine Physician Shui. There you go. Gong Yugan gave a sigh and thought, We are really down on luck meeting these bunch of lunatics. He still had the, has the mood to pound grains in this kind of dire situation. It's still acceptable if he is really pounding grains, but the mortar contains grain husk and soil, alas. Bao Bu Tong and Feng Bo -e were resting in the hall due to their frost poison, but after a while they also rushed to the rear garden. Pung, 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 pung. The pounding sound uninterrupted. Bao Bu Tong said, Buddy, you are pounding the grains for cooking, but you aren't pounding grains. I suggest we better plow the field and plant corn seeds when they grow. Suddenly, the southeast corner of the garden, around seven to eight jang away, gave a squeaking sound. The sound was soft, but rather unique. Xuan Nan, Gong Yugan, and the rest looked towards the direction of the sound. They saw four dwarf cassia trees. Pung, pung. The carpenter kept on pounding, but the strange thing was that the second cassia tree from the right started shaking. Little by little, it moved. After a while, everyone understood. 
When the carpenter pounded the, the mortar, the cassia tree would move around an inch. The zither man cheered and rushed towards the cassia tree. He said in a low voice, Not bad, not bad. Everyone followed him and ran over. The cassia tree had moved aside, revealing a big stone slab. An iron ring was attached to the slab. <clears throat> Gong Yugan was impressed and he felt ashamed. He said, This secret underground mechanism is ingeniously arranged. It's really fantastic. My dear friend, you discovered it within such a short time. You are really intelligent and wise, no less inferior than the creator of the mechanism. Babu Tong said, Not true, not true. How do you know this mechanism isn't created by him? I said his ability and wisdom isn't inferior to the creator. If he is the creator, then his ability and wisdom naturally is not inferior to himself. Not true, not true. He is not inferior, but maybe he is superior. How can his ability and wisdom be superior to himself? The carpenter pounded another ten times. The big stone slab was completely exposed. The zither elderly man gripped the iron ring and pulled it, but it did not move an inch. As, as he was about to channel his internal energy and give it another pull, the carpenter cried out in fear. Elder brother, stop! He jumped up and put the stone pestle on another mortar. He pulled down his pants and started urinating. He shouted, Everyone, quickly, come over! Let us urinate together! Uh... <laughs> the elderly man was start startled and quickly put down the iron ring. In a split second, the chessboard-wielding man, bookworm, judge-pen-wielding scholar, all of them went over and started urinating into the mortar. Uh, lucky that uh, that pretty woman was uh, is fainted. Is fainted? Luckily that pretty woman fainted. She doesn't have to urinate into the mortar. Gong Yigan saw these five people urinate like mad. It was really funny, and he could not refrain from laughing, but instantly everyone caught a whiff of gunpowder. The carpenter said, Enough! The danger is over! The zither elderly man had a lot of urine. He kept on urinating non-stop. He mumbled to himself, Damn it! Damn it! I mess up another mechanism! Six brother, luckily you spotted it quick, else everyone would have been blown to meat pastes. Gong Yugan trembled with fear. He became aware that he had just come back from the gates of hell. Obviously, a flint was linked to the iron ring. When the ring was pulled, the fuse was lighted, and it advanced to the hidden, hidden explosive. Fortunately, the carpenter was extremely vigilant. Everyone urinated, and they managed to wet the fuse, and thus averted a big disaster. Nice. Man, those, four, those, those other four people, they were super quick. It was like, quick, pee on this, and everyone was like, suddenly... Immediately peed on it. They were, they were very fast. The carpenter walked to the first stone mortar to the right. He exerted his strength and turned the mortar three times to the right. He raised his head towards the sky and recited something. After a long time, he turned the mortar six and a half times to the left. Suddenly, they heard another small squeaking sound. The big stone slab moved aside, revealing a hole. Oh, it's like a combination lock, kind of. This time, the zither elder dared not rush in. He waved his hands at the carpenter and signaled him to lead the way. The carpenter knelt down on the floor. He looked carefully at the first mortar to the left. Suddenly, they heard someone curse from underground. Old freak of Xingxiu, you evil bastard! Very good, very good, you finally found me! You're brilliant! You committed all sorts of crime, retribution will eventually come! Come, come, come in and kill me! And with that, we end this chapter. Sorry guys. <laughs> we will find out who that person is next time. They really, they are Kelly'd it. Maybe they were all holding in the pee while fighting. True.
Yeah, they fought for so long, they were just, they were just all holding in their pee. And when someone was like, hey! Good chapter? Was it? <laughs> was it? Uh, uh. Alright. So who the hell are these people? Uh, well, I guess they're, they're the sworn brothers and sisters of the Divine Physician Sway. Yeah, and they're all like, they're all kind of lunatics. Peepzilla, should you keep sending super stickers or just Patreon up? Uh, <laughs> whatever you want. Whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Alright. Cheers. You got confused who was who and where did they come from? Ah, uh, yeah, true. So there were three groups, right? Um, the Mu Rong Fu, the Mu Rong group, the, uh, the Shaolin group, and then this new group. Um, yeah, which is the, the brothers and sisters of the Divine Physician. Yeah, that's it. There are a lot of people to, uh, though, right? A lot of people to remember. All right. I think we're done. Um, oh, do, you, do we want a... Oh, I know. Let's do a goodbye poem. Okay. All right. Let's do... <laughs> let's tell this AI to do a goodbye poem. Write me a heartfelt goodbye poem. That rhymes. <clears throat> Written by a no. What? What? Let me refresh it. Oh, come on. What? All right, let's try this. Are you kidding me? Too many people are using it. <clears throat> We broke it. God damn it. No. Okay. It's working, it's working. <clears throat> it's working, it's working. Oh, Alright guys. This is our goodbye poem. It's time to part, there's no denying. This is the time our paths divide. But I will hold each memory close that we have shared since we have tried. It's hard to say goodbye in so many tears, but I hope you know that I am here to keep your heart in my embrace and never forget your sweet face. Although it's hard to part this way, my love and thoughts go with you each day. So take my heart, it's yours to keep. Goodbye, my love, until we meet. Hi, guys. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye.